Hi, Mark Cleborn here from the Photographer Academy and today we're talking food photography and kind of just setting up a simple image, uh, kind of running it all through for you anyway. The good news for me, it's one of my fav favorite things today, it's cinnamon buns. Uh, some, some would say I've eaten all the buns and the pies and everything else, but that's a whole different thing. Um, I want to run through uh, the kind of basic setup first, if that's okay with you, uh, and then I'll kind of uh, reveal a little bit more. But we should be able to get this shot done, because I put the light in place, within pretty much four or five minutes. Now I know some friends of mine who are specialists in food photography and product photography and everything else, they'll pretty much milk this for a good two hours to three hour shoot during the course of the day and because they're specialists and I'm not, that's the difference, yeah? So this, consider this more like we're working on location. Um, I've opted for my studio style, I know if you don't mind, we're doing a 45 degree angle shot. There's three main angles in food photography, it's basically point of view, 45 degree and then a flat lay okay so point of view is kind of quite low then you get your 45 degree kind of angle then you've got your flat lay which is over the top pretty much get those three shots in every product shoot that you ever do and you're done um i've, I've opted for just uh, uh one light source today okay uh, so any other lights that you're seeing in the uh, the shot are basically all video lights they're nothing to do with the set here uh i've got a 7x5 high uh Highlight. I usually use the smaller ver version of this, um, but uh, we've got a kind of a floor to window length kind of image here. So if I was having to shoot 24 seven, or at least eight hours a day in UK as a food photographer, I couldn't really rely on the quality of the light coming through a window the whole time. So I'd much prefer to actually use something that I can control. And this big kind of background you're being used as a light source is ideal, but this could be a white, a white wall with a scrim in front to diffuse the light and so on with it. Okay, so that's going to be the main light. And to meter, in fact, we're going to be metering uh, from the actual front of the bun back towards the light at uh, the light source. Now, this is a kind of a more of a lifestyle image. So I've got my F4, okay? Um, I want a kind of a focus at the front, drop away focus at the back. That's the main thing with it. So um, before I even do anything else, all right, let's just do the basic shot. Let's have a little look. I need to move this forward just a tad. I'm leaving some uh, negative space on the right hand side there. Uh, that's coming up on screen. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, so that's my F4. Um, as you can see though, the front of the buns are quite dark. And obviously what I don't want to do is just rely on the likes of the post-production in Photoshop to fix all these things. Most of the food photography that I do though is touched in some way in raw. So in other words, we kind of brighten and lighten with the adjustment brush, add some more texture in there with the, te uh, the texture as well. Uh, some, uh, some areas are darkened down or whatever, but we've got a kind of a good shot here, uh, here and we could easily flip this to the vertical. If you have been a lazy photographer and you've got a camera with loads of pic pixels, you could pretty much uh, set it up for the two shots in one. So obviously you're gonna go into a, a crop of a horizontal, a crop of a square and a crop of a vertical image in the same way. I'm old, old school, I still shoot each one. Okay, so as far as uh, the basics, we're, we're almost there, okay? So with a few little reflectors in a minute, we're, we're kind of finished the shot without any trouble. So get to grips with this as a window before anything else. And this is kind of bringing the light all across. That's where we've got all this lovely light area behind here. And these are very, very old ta uh, tables that we inherited during the years of when we bought kind of properties. And again, my studio is an old converted church. So we kind of get all these, we've got lots of different kind of effects for, ta uh, for tabletops and so on. Um, you're seeing the image basically straight through into capture one. Uh, it's very, very fast compared to the likes of, light, of, light, of light, Lightroom. But to be honest, the lightning speed is actually coming through the uh, reliability of the likes of the tether tool uh, kind of connection in, in towards the camera and kind of feeding straight out. Right, so um, let's uh, bring some life to the, pro the, the product, yeah? So on table anyway, you should see quite a variety of things. And I'm looking for my white which I think I just ripped up. Um, I did, what an idiot. I ripped up so because my tabletop was wobbling. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, make do with what you've got in life, not what, not what you can't, uh, what you haven't got. So the first thing now, um, this is about reflecting light back, okay? 
So let's look at what that one reflector alone does. So let's just watch, let's have on screen, please, okay, the shot that we have now, yeah? And then what I'm gonna do is take the next shot, and then we'll just see how it brighten up that right-hand corner of that bun straight away. Can you see it? It's instant. So straight away, we're doing our job. We just earn another fiver. Um, I wanna add a little bit of texture and a little bit of brightness just along that uh, back edge there. And so we've slightly moved this one reflector as you just saw from there to there. That is just so there's gonna be less light on the front of this bun, a little bit more light coming up the side here. And we've added in that sil uh, the silver on the opposite side just to add quite a lot of texture to that right. Can you see that it's there already? But in fact, because this main bun really is, that this one here is the main one, I'm just gonna do a quick test to see if sil silver will be better, in fact. Let me just do a half sil silver. <laughs> this is just cooking aluminum foil, yeah? Um, so I'm just gonna replace it with the flat white. Just adding the silver in there. Fingers crossed it's not in shot. We'll have a look now. Yeah, it's better. So it's bringing that alive a little bit more, but I think it needs a tad, a tad more, in fact. So I'm gonna have to actually bring the, uh, this one, yeah, here. So I want that kind of reflecting onto this bun. I've made that decision now. I definitely want it alive. We don't wanna over light and kind of give a flat light. We wanna still give some three dimension to the image. Um, as a rule, oh, that's much better. I think it's a little bit flat, flat though. Let's take it to the side just a touch. Move it out of shot as well. Um, and it's gonna be much better on that bun. Yep, brilliant. So we're there. I think it's just still a little bit much, in fact. Uh, I'm just gonna move that reflector back out a little bit more. Pretty much there. And I think with the white that isn't doing anything, I'm just gonna bring a little bit of texture back onto this side. It's really thrown out of focus anyway, so it's not too big a deal. I'm using a 24 to 105 lens today. However, most of the time when I'm shoot, shoot, shooting food, you'll know I'm gonna be using prime lenses and that would either be the likes of a 50 mil, 85 mil or a 105, okay? 105 macro specifically. But I just thought we'd keep it nice and easy in this, in, this introduction. If you've got a bit of a reflector at hand, don't, don't be afraid to basically even just kind of add a few little into the mix so you get a little bit of variety before you kind of take away the set. Um, at times, I think we can get a bit pretentious and go, oh, that's the shot, you know, and blah, blah, blah. But just over light it just a little bit more just before we kind of get rid of the set and things really. Um, I think now we should actually fill up that little bit of um, information on the side there. What I mean by information, sorry, is the, is the space up in the top right hand side. So if this was gonna be for a kind of a magazine article or an advert, whatever, we've definitely left that space up the top part. Let's just bring in, um, a glass ball, let's put it in the background anyway. We'll chuck a spoon in for now, just see if that does anything. See if it's in shot first. It's not in enough. Now, because I'm throwing the focus out, the depth of field is, I should say, um, that kind of glass jar has gone through. Let's um, just add a little bit of a darker texture, I think, just in on the edge, just in the background see if that makes a difference. Um, I don't really want to put the glass on top of the board. Yeah, quite like that. And I think, let's just chuck this in as well. Just in there. The, there is the expression, remember, of kissing it. Keep it simple, stu stu stupid in other words. Let's have a little look. It's not really doing it. Perhaps it should be coming in from that side. So look again. Um, to be fair, I'm not a stylist, I'm a photographer. What does that mean? Now I know some pe people, i.e. photographers, are food, food photographers specifically, are stylists as well. Um, I, I don't see myself as that. I basically 
chef comes in or stylist comes in, they do all their bit and then basically I'm out of it. Yeah, I th I, that's okay. It's a bit too finished. <laughs> Let's make it a little bit more unreal. Nope, hate that. So let's just turn that in again. It just felt a little bit square before. I don't like it as much, so let's just bring it out of shot just a touch more. It might work in the top right-hand corner when we're gonna do a long shot. Okay, yeah, pretty much it, all right? I don't mind that at all. Um, so we've got lovely light down in this uh, side of the bun here. It's all kind of light coming up all the way. We've got that fantastic window wash of light because the light is coming in from behind. And we're just using those uh, uh, foil and white card reflectors to add in that kind of texture running up there. I wonder if that end is better. <laughs> I'm now fussing, I do apologize. Yeah, but it needs to go up there. Flash would help, Mark. Great, I like that a lot. So um, let's do it before we just change anything now. Let's just do a couple of shots, making sure it's sharp. Change the focus point to the top of the bun. Get a few there as well. Um, reflect on the side, reflect from above, reflect from the side. Yep, so we've got that. This is just a tri-grip reflector allows me to kind of hold and kind of change. I want to, uh, in fact, increase the exposure now up to from F4 to the likes of eight. So I'm just going to press the plus on the back of the um, uh, sky, uh, the Skyport trigger up here 20 times to put it up two stops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That is sending the, sig uh, the signal for that light to actually put it up. So let's do the same shot, make sure. It did do its job, that saves me having to meter. That's our 20 times. So I obviously haven't put it up enough. So this is now worth the meter. Remember from the middle of the button back towards the light. That is not what is gonna change. So we have got our F8 in fact. Let me just check I'm on F8. I am, let's do it again. Looks pretty good. Let's add in that uh, reflected light again. And now, of course, what we've got is that bigger depth of field. If I want a bigger depth across the whole set, now, if we're looking on the screen for a minute, where my focus point was, this bun two at the front, okay, the right-hand bun, I was focused on the middle, on the top of the cream. Now what I've done is changed my focus point to the number uh, kind of four bun, as it were. So in other words, the middle bun on the right-hand side, I'm gonna focus in on that one and then we're gonna use depth of field to fake the focus. So that will actually bring that back, uh, so that middle row more in line, and I can do the same shot. So in other words, I've just increased the focus there across the whole image, because it's mid midpoint fo focus now, instead of front focus. And then if I wanted to just be sure, let's just whack the ISO up to 200, put it on 11, once more, shot, 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 shot. Yeah, pretty good. So um, from that, you can see in the sake of, I know we kind of milked this for you to kind of show you all the setup and everything else, but literally with that light behind, we've got a, a, a shot without any real work at all. Um, that's the end of part one. We're gonna continue on this setup, in fact, in part two, where we're gonna be looking at quickly swap a uh, swap in first of all to a vertical image and then we're going to move and actually incorporate some pop-up backgrounds to give us a different effect as well and it the light uh, the light and effect will be totally different as well because obviously it, it's direction thanks for joining me see you on the next one bye-bye